Has there ever been a disaster in Manton? Manton? <laughs> Nothing ever happens here, mate. Manton, population 2,300, is the centre for a mixed farming area. It's well served with shops and public amenities, including a district school and home units for the elderly. The town water supply comes from the placid Alpha River, which last flooded in 1932. This is bounded to the south by pastoral lands and to the north by timber country. Because nothing ever happens in Manton, a state emergency service officer faces a difficult task in his attempt to convince the local community that a counter-emergency plan is needed. The appointment of an efficient local coordinator and a well-trained municipal unit working to assist the statutory authorities in accordance with the local counter-disaster plan. That is the very backbone of this service and it is necessary... He explains the need for a plan for coordination of existing resources and the raising of a local volunteer group. Although his presentation is lucid, the general reaction is mild indifference. In the wings, the question lurks, just waiting to be asked. Who's going to pay for all this? Government aid is available to assist municipalities in the production of their local counter-disaster plans and to provide equipment and training. The only thing that councils are asked to provide is the administrative costs of producing the local counter-disaster plan and provide facilities for the storage of equipment and somewhere for the local volunteers to train. Mainly, sir, what we ask is your support for the volunteers that are raised within your municipality. Thank you, Mr Warden. In view of this explanation, and after further discussion, the council agrees to arrange the appointment of a local coordinator for the local emergency service. Although a public meeting to appoint a coordinator has been well advertised, in Manton, it's something of a non-event trained volunteers working under an effective local coordinator to assist the statutory authorities in times of emergency or disaster. This local coordinator will be a person who has the respect of his fellows and possesses the ability to formulate and implement plans and possesses the dedication to the ideals of an emergency service. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Brand. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard the proposal as outlined by Mr Brand and that is that this meeting, let's clarify it, makes a recommendation to council for the appointment of a local coordinator. All clear on that? May I therefore call for nominations? I'd like to nominate Mr Evans. Mr Evans has been nominated. Is there a seconder? Thank you. Are there any further nominations? Then I take it that this meeting recommends to council the appointment of Mr Evans and congratulate him on his recommendation. On the recommendation of the meeting, council later appoints him coordinator. Uh, I have six at the moment. Six. Yes. As the local emergency service will be responsible for coordinating the community's efforts in time of emergency, Bill Evans contacts various local organisations with a view to forming a committee. You know, we're always ready to help as far as disasters are concerned and we have the manpower and we have the equipment available. Our main problem lies in this area. The road access is fairly poor. The committee forms a plan of action, marking out potential emergency problems on a survey map of the district. They discuss the raising of a volunteer group and what equipment will be needed. Equipment begins to arrive and is moved into the building which is to be the emergency centre. By word of mouth, personal persuasion and articles in the local press, a group of volunteers is brought together and qualified instructors demonstrate the use of the equipment. 
And you'll see the loads being applied now. Okay. A St John officer leads the first aid group. ...so that it's comfortable for the patient and it must be a reef knot once again because the reef knot will lie nice and flat and will not slip. Now, in welfare work equipment... The welfare group, comprising many community service organisations, practice the important role they will play in an emergency. The griller, it's very, very simple to operate. This is your volume control... The radio is the means by which all these services are coordinated through base. All this training culminates in a combined exercise in the field. Ladies and gentlemen, the aim of this exercise is twofold. Firstly, to test the rescue team in basic communications and search and rescue techniques. Secondly, to practice the welfare team in the preparation of a simple meal in the field. The rescue team, using the grid reference which will be supplied to them, will find the casualty and after preparing the necessary first aid, will bring the casualty back to the exercise base which has been established already by welfare. Three. Base. We are at grid reference. Two, two, one, three, four, seven, and are about to commence line search. Over. Base, this is 3-3. Base. We have located casualty and are proceeding to exercise base. Over. Nothing ever happens here. Yes, Sergeant. Bill, we've got a bad bus crash on the main road just past the Sunshine Home. I'll require your rescue team and some first aiders. Right away. With complete assurance. In a rural society, a three and even four generations have...
keep away from the bus, fellas. We've got live wires everywhere now. Just keep away. Keep that truck moving. We want this area clear. Keep it moving. Right, the power's off, John. 591 to base, over. Sergeant, from the radio, the power's dead now. OK, fellas, in you go. Manton based unit 33, what's the current situation? 33, we've gained access to the bus. Uh, the most seriously injured are going in the first ambulance, and other ones expected shortly. Over. Roger, base out. Welfare 2 to control, over. Manton base. I'm at the Sunshine Homes, the power is off, and I can foresee some difficulties. I need a generator and some gas heaters. Over. Roger, Welfare 2. We'll get that equipment out to you straight away. Other facilities will be available from the crash scene shortly. Base out. There's your glass of water. Thank Everything you. else all right? Thank you. Good. Me. I'll go and see how the others are getting along, and I'll be back in a few minutes to see how you are. Thank all you. right? Good. All the victims have now been removed from the wreck and the first aiders continue their duties in preparation for transport to the district hospital. With everything under control of the accident site, a backup group is sent to assist welfare too at the elderly people's units. The elderly people who are not bedridden have been moved to the communal room and hot food is being prepared. The last ambulance has left the crash site and the mopping up operation is completed. Now the volunteers who have worked so hard can take a well-earned break. Ah, oh, thanks, Elaine. No, thank God we had a plan. And be all ready. To cope with any major emergency, there must be three things. An informed community alert to any dangers and willing to be involved. A plan that unites the community's resources to overcome the effects of any emergency. Trained personnel ready to carry out the necessary tasks should disaster strike. <laughs> 